poisonous and predatory, the cane toad is the eco-scourge of Australia. First introduced to combat agricultural pests, the toad has become a menace in itself, wreaking havoc on this country's fragile ecosystems and ravaging native wildlife. I'm Tamara Sheward in Northern Australia, not far from where 102 cane toads were first brought into this country and released in 1935. <laughs> Introducing the South American cane toad to Australia to eat sugar cane beetles was one of the most disastrous environmental mistakes in the country's history. Since their release nearly 80 years ago, they have conquered 1 million square kilometres of territory. There are now more than 200 million cane toads in Australia. That's about 10 per person. It's not hard to understand why toad-busting militia groups have sprung up all around Australia. Anti-toad activists conduct border controls and night patrols to protect suburbs like this from the attack of the toads. We caught them just over there, um, that just basically because they prefer a damp habitat but not wet like frogs do. So, yeah, that's where we found them and we're hoping to catch more. I know. I'm scared one's going to hold up my leg. When the sun goes down in Townsville, the whole community is at war with the nocturnal amphibian. <laughs> this okay. puffy bit that's popping in and out, that's their belly? Yep, that, that's the stomach. But yeah, these sort of sacks here, these kind of squishy sacks, that's where all the poison lives. Yep. It is advisable to wear gloves just, just in case they excrete poison from the poison glands behind their eyes, but it is quite unlikely unless you cheese them off quite a lot. Ah! Ah! Oh, I've got one! Oh, well I've got done. one! OK, so I finally caught myself a toad. Um, it's not a very big one, but it's still really gross. I can feel it pulsating in my hands. So he's really not the most attractive fellow I've ever laid eyes on. Oh, yeah! He's really going wild. <laughs> Female cane toads lay around 20,000 eggs in one sitting, and the species is poisonous from tadpole to adult. There have been countless unsuccessful attempts at eradication, but now science may have come up with a very simple and practical way of winning the war by appealing to the toad's incredible sex drive. What is this toad doing? Okay, this toad is producing venom. That's the venom coming out there, that sort of milky substance that it's producing. If you're a predator trying to mm -hmm. eat them, they will produce this substance. It's extremely poisonous. It's full of something called bufotoxins, and uh, they're special to toads, and they're really, really toxic, so they will kill a large vertebrate very easily. Dr. Lynn Schwarzkopf has been working on a new trap that specifically targets reproductive females and increases their capture rate by up to 300%. What it does is two things. It has a light on the side of it, which you can see here, and a call, which you can hear right now. The light attracts insects, which is food for the toads, and that attracts both males and females into the traps. The innovative and new part of this trap is that it also produces sound. So this has speakers on it, and the speakers produce a call that male toads make to attract females into the trap so that we capture females with eggs and remove them from the environment before they lay their eggs. Female amphibians in general are quite choosy. They don't like the call of any old male. They like the call to be sort of deep voiced. Sort of, you know, that's big right. guy, deep voice, yeah, soul deep singer voice. Yes, sort that's of thing. Right. It's, it's really like a bit of a toad disco. Andrew Hane is environmental manager for the Townsville City Council. So the toads were originally introduced to Queensland, but then over time they've steadily moved and they've moved through into the Northern Territory and now they're even starting to get through into the border of Western Australia. The reality is there's basically an army of 200 million of these little amphibians out there in our environment that the native wildlife see as little bags of food. All it takes is for them to eat one of these and they can die. So they're really having a devastating effect on our local biodiversity. So even a wildlife sanctuary like this one isn't immune to the devastation from a cane toad. Unfortunately, uh, Billabong Sanctuary lost a female cassowary charlie. We came in one morning and she passed away. And it was revealed that she'd actually ingested a cane toad and, and the poison they carry uh, was sufficient enough to, to actually kill her. And I think we've got, you know, cassowaries being a very ancient bird who have been around for millions and millions of years, aren't immune to an animal that's only been in Australia for the last sort of 70 years. 
but we've had to go through and retrofit a lot of our enclosures with some smaller gauge chicken wire to prevent even small toadlets getting into our enclosures. We just don't want to run the risk of any toad really getting in there and us losing another cassowaries. We're just trying to get out a very large estuarine crocodile um, from this pond here, and I'm terrified. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Oh my god. Whoa. That guy is humongous. So I understand cane toads are a threat to cute, cuddly, small animals like the northern quoll mm -hmm. and some birds and the like, but right. it's right. cane toads threaten that, that beast there. Yeah, so what, what we're looking at there is, you know, the world's largest living reptile uh, in the estuarine crocodile. And, and these guys do suffer at the hands of cane toads as well. Not all estuarine crocodiles are that size, they, mm -hmm. they, they do stay out a lot, a lot smaller, and so... Uh, a part of their diet when they are smaller uh, is amphibians. We do find that uh, cane toads are a problem for estuarine crocodiles and also freshwater crocodiles, which is the other species. It, the mind boggles when you think about the world's largest living reptiles succumbing to a cane toad. Yeah. Uh, they're the size of the palm of your hand. So just one cane toad can bring down this guy. How, how much would, would, would he weigh? You're looking at probably 450, 500 kilos of crocodile there. That's 500 kilograms of croc versus 1.3 kilograms of lovely poisonous toad. It's night time and once again the cane toads come out to play, but this time they fall in prey to Lynn's trap. Well, that is quite a good haul for an evening, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad. What do you reckon about 40, 50? Yeah, something like that, 45 toads. We were catching some toads by hand before. Um, how does this compare with that? Well, it's a lot easier to catch toads this way. You don't need to have a whole group of kids organized. You don't have to brief them on how to do it, and um, you don't have to go out personally and pick them up. People might put it in the back corner of their garden, and that would remove toads from their garden regularly. People could put it out in um, um, city parks and gardens. Places like wildlife parks um, have been very interested in using them, and places like islands where you might be able to eradicate toads completely. So, okay, so with these toads here, we've removed about 50. Mm -hmm. So we've only got about 100 million, 900,050 left to go. That's right, that's okay. right. Okay, well, this is a pretty good start. 